I raised my hand to my child for the first time ever, and after that, nothing was the same. I didn't know what I was doing in life, in my career, in marriage, but especially as a parent. I had no clue what I was doing. I'm Coach Bruce, and I'm a life coach for ADHD parents. Come back with me to around 2019. Really, it's just a blip in my 40 years of how long ago that was. But I was in a completely different place. <clears throat> I was fitter than I'd ever been, so that was going okay. I was at the fire department, and I was raising up the ranks. I'd made corporal, and I'd finally had a little bit of money in my pocket and was bringing some stability to the home. But my marriage was seriously threatened for the first time. My wife was ready to leave me over the same job that was bringing stability into our house. She hated me, gone, me being gone for 24 hours at a time. It drove her crazy, and I didn't care. I wanted so badly to have financial security that I did not give a shit that she was dying. I had no idea how to parent. I was doing okay, but it was purely out of luck. The examples that were laid out for me were total shit. And I was doing my best to just not repeat the same mistakes that had been taken out on me. That was my entire framework. Just don't fuck my kids up like my parents fucked me up. That's all I had. <clears throat> I was frequently having more and more inappropriate conversations on social media. I had no connection with God. God who? I didn't have the bandwidth or the desire to get closer to a higher being. I just wanted to survive. That's all I cared about. I wanted to survive and if possible, feel good sometimes. That's where the Instagram conversations came in. But overall, it was a mixed bag. I was making some money. I was physically fit, even though I hated myself and my body. And my wife and I were at one of the lowest points we'd ever been at. But I did a lot with my kids. I took them out. We went on hikes and I was super dad when we went anywhere else. But at home, I had no idea what I was doing. While in the midst of this tumult, this extremely uncertain time of my life, my middle daughter decided to give me some lip after I'd given her a command. That's what I was raised with, giving commands. And surprisingly, that's what I did as well. I didn't know what else to do. I had no idea how to get my family on board to move towards common goals. So I gave commands. And if I got anything back, I was intimidating. That's how I was raised. You are feared, then respected. You weren't respected because you deserved it. And so I gave this command and my daughter, being funny, she denied. No, daddy. I don't remember what the command was. It doesn't matter. I just remember that I was furious. The rage started to fill up in me. And I looked at my wife, who was full of venom as well, because we'd been fighting frequently. And our daughter, as innocent as she was, was now the target of the rage that we both felt. Neither of us knew anything but respect your parents. Period. So as she denied me, again, I raised my voice and I screamed at her. And I told her she wasn't going to like what happened next. And she taunted me because she knew that I didn't know what would happen next. Because I had no fucking clue how to parent. All I knew was how to avoid another disaster. Until today. On this day... The rage finally took over. And because I didn't have a guiding standard, I didn't have any sort of code that I lived by, I grabbed her by the hand and I took her back to her bedroom and I bent her over my knee and I raised my hand and I spanked the only child I have ever spanked. And it immediately broke my fucking heart. It's been almost five years and I still feel 
the disgust for myself because I didn't know how to handle a six-year-old. I physically abused her. I don't care what kind of parent you are, but to me, laying your hands on your children is abuse. And I'd only ever done it once. And I immediately knew it was wrong. And to this day, that sticks with me. But unfortunately, it wasn't even rock bottom. That wasn't enough for me at that moment to realize that living a life, running away from emotional lows and running towards emotional highs wasn't good enough for my children. Putting my hands on my daughter wasn't enough of a wake up call to realize that this is not how you lead a fucking family. I still didn't get it. God was trying to give me a sign to say, this isn't how you do it, Bruce. You have to have a plan. You have to have a standard. You have to have a code. There has to be something that you live by for when things get dark, you remember, if you cling to the code, things will get better. I don't think my daughter gives a shit that I didn't have a code. Our relationship is still different. I love her and she loves me, but she still knows in her heart deep down that she can't trust me. And that's my fault. And I hope that I can make up by being a better leader now. And I hope that someday she'll trust me as much as I want to be trusted, but I honestly don't deserve it because I put my hands on her, an innocent child who I'm supposed to protect. I put my hands on her and that's something I get to live with for the rest of my life. I can look at the three other of my children and feel slightly free of guilt for at least never having gone that far. But the same lack of parenting standard didn't do them much justice either. Living your life at the whim of ADHD is not fair to your children. I don't expect you to hold yourself to the neurotypical standard, to do everything that neurotypicals would do. I don't expect you to raise a family like the Cleavers, but I expect you to have a standard. There has to be a point of no return. There has to be a line that cannot be crossed and you have to define it. Nobody else is gonna do that for you or else you'll find out like I did too late that there is a place that you don't wanna go. And when you feel it, when you feel that place, it covers you like slime. There's no washing it off. It doesn't ever go away. You just forget about it and you become numb to it until you think about it again and you sit in the shame and guilt and regret and you realize this is why you have to be better. This feeling that I feel right now is why I have to live by a code. Why I have to set a standard for my family and what I do for them and how I show up every day. There has to be more than, uh, I'm not feeling it right now. I have to be committed to a unified vision for my family that I am driving them towards. It is my job. Who else is going to do that for me? Who else is doing it for you? I'm begging you to be more for your family. You have to have an identified set of core values, core values, beliefs, goals that you are trying to move towards. You have to have a compelling future or else you are just in the wind. And whenever the wind pushes you hard enough, you will fucking fold and you will do something that is going to do irreparable damage to yourself or your family. Do better. The end.